Hello, my name is Steve and welcome to our family service today, which as you can see is still taking place online. But even though we can't meet together in church, it's great that we can join together via YouTube to worship God together. And today we're going to be thinking about this, which as you can probably see is bread. Uh, why are we looking at bread today? Well, over the last few Sundays, we've been looking in the Bible at Jesus' I am statements where Jesus tries and use everyday objects to try and describe to people what he's like. And today we're looking at Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. What did Jesus mean by I am the bread of life? Well, that's what we're going to try and answer in today's service. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to start rather unusually with our craft. Then we're going to have our welcome and then a game. Then it's going to be our story, looking at Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. There's a chance for us to worship God with our voices and our bodies in our action song. Then we're going to finish off our craft and finally close in prayer. So yes, we're doing things in a different order today by starting with our craft. And that's because for our craft today, we're going to be baking bread. And that's going to take a little time. I thought if we're going to be talking about Jesus being the bread of life, well, we should try and make some bread ourselves to know a little bit about bread and how you go about making it. And of course, it's what you're meant to do in a lockdown, isn't it? Bake bread. So uh, we're bang on message there. Um, so what do we need for our craft today? Well, you're going to need some bread flour, uh, some strong flour, 225 grams of that. You're going to need some butter, 20 grams, which you can't really see because it's all run down the bottom because it's melted. You can melt it in a saucepan or in a low power in the microwave, which is what I've done. You're going to need some fast action yeast. This is going to help our bread rise. We need about four grams of that. We'll need a pinch of salt. We'll need some warm water, 150 milliliter of warm water. Uh, so not boiling, but so it's safe to put your hands in. It helps the yeast kick in a bit quicker if the water is warm. A little extra flour for dusting later on, and then a bowl and a spoon to mix it all together. Don't worry about getting all that. I'll put the ingredients and some of the instructions in the description down below. So this is a really simple bread mixture. What we do is we start with our flour. So we add our bread flour, our strong flour to the bowl like this here. And now we're gonna make a little well in the middle with our spoon. And I'm gonna add the butter, our melted butter, right in to the middle of that well there. Perfect. I'm going to make sure I get it all in because we want that lovely butter to be in there. Uh, then we need to add our yeast and salt. We want to put them on separate sides for now because the salt interferes a bit with the yeast. So I'm just going to pour in our four grams of fast acting yeast and then just a pinch of salt for flavour. So I'm just going to put a little salt in there as well. And then finally, we're going to slowly add our water and mix it all together. So I'm just going to add the water bit by bit here and give it all a mix and get everything nice and wet. Uh, don't have to be too exact about this. It's a really simple recipe. So we just have to kind of bung everything in, mix it, knead it. And that's more or less all we got to do. So there's all the water at it. I'm now going to give it a big mix around so it forms a slightly sticky, doughy mixture. So I'm going to just quickly do that. I might speed this bit up so you don't have to sit and watch me do it. Now, we should see we have our sticky doughy mixture in here as well. And the next step in making bread after mixing everything together is something called kneading it. That's where we kind of have to work the dough with our hands to get all those strands that hold the bread together. So what we're going to do, you can do this two ways. You can do it by hand or you can do it a slightly quicker way by using like the dough handle in your food mixer if you've got one as well. So do whichever one you want. The dough one in the food mixture takes about four to five minutes by hand. It takes five to 10. It's a bit of fun by hand, but it is a bit of hard work too. So you might want to try a bit of both and see what you prefer. So I'm going to stick out uh, our dough here. And I'm going to get it a little bit in flour so it's not too sticky. And then what you do to knead it is just get your hand and rub it down like that there, fold it in rub it down, pretty much anything you can do to what we call work the dough and just get everything mixed up, get those strands going. Now it's going to take a little while to do this. I said about five to ten minutes and we're going to have to keep 
the flour there to stop it sticking to the table. And I thought, well, why we do this, let's have a video of a song. And I thought the song today, we're in lockdown, so it's a video from the first lockdown when we couldn't come together and worship God. So people made a video remotely of them singing and worshipping God. And that's what we're going to have now, an a cappella version of In Christ Alone. So while that plays, let's keep on kneading and working our dough. And we'll come back and see what it looks like in five or ten minutes time. love that video. I hope you did too. Dozens of people coming together from around the world to worship God. And if you've been kneading your dough by hand for about five to ten minutes, we'll be nearly finished. One, two, and finish. 
Oh, that was hard work. Perhaps it might have been easier to use a food mixer after all. But this next stage is my favorite stage because it's proving where you basically just leave it alone for ages. Uh, what we're going to do is form our dough into a sort of rough bowl shape like this here, put it in a glass bowl and leave it. Because what happens now is the yeast starts to work and puts air in the bread and it's going to grow to about twice its size. So we put our dough in the bowl and then cover it with some cling film to keep the air in. Uh, now it's better if you oil the cling film. So what I'm going to do is get some of the leftover butter we melted earlier and just spread it over my cling film like this. You can just use vegetable oil or any other type of oil you have around the house. And when that's nicely oiled, we're going to put it over the top of our bowl and seal it in. Now, it can take about 60 to 90 minutes for this to rise. So I'm going to set this to the side and then we'll carry on with the rest of our service until it's gone to about twice the size that we start with. All right, I'll go put this away and then we'll come back and carry on. Right, and while we wait for our dough to prove, we're going to have our welcome, which is a chance for us to share something good about our week, something we're thankful for. And I know it can be hard and difficult during lockdown, but it's still important, even at difficult times, to look back and think about something good, something we're thankful for. Um, I'm going to start, but I'm going to need, as usual, my little helper. So let's bring him in now. And here's Theo. Hey, do you want to say hello and give everyone a wave, Theo? Give him a little wave. <laughs> I will give him a smile, that'll do. Now, what's something you're thankful for this week? I think it's this here, Theo. This is a little toy that he's got from Nanny and Grandad. They can't see him, so they've sent him this little toy. And you've loved playing it this week, haven't you? It makes lots of really strange noises, doesn't it? So I think we're really thankful for that. Do you want to do this one? Yeah. And thank you, Theo. Now, I've also been sent some photos about things that you've been thankful for this week. So I'm going to show a few of them to you now. Uh, let's start with Zoe and Micah, who say they've been enjoying being outdoors, in the woods, and playing with the leaves. You can see them doing that here. I mean, that looks like a lot of fun, so I can see why they're very thankful for that. They've also enjoyed playing with sparklers. I suppose it has been bonfire night recently, and that's a great thing to do, isn't it? So that's something that they're thankful for this week. I think outdoors and trees are a bit of a theme because here's Mallow, who's been grateful for the chance to play outdoors and climb trees. Uh, Henry loves being outdoors too, and he's thankful for um, drinking mud, which I'm not sure is something I'd recommend doing. And Michelle, Henry and Malu's mum, is also thankful that her kids are forcing her to go outdoors. And I think Malu and Henry have been thankful for each other and being able to play with each other during lockdown. Uh, you can see here that Malu is teaching Henry to escape from the playground. Again, not something I'm sure I'd recommend they look like they're having a lot of fun doing it uh, so thank you to zoe micah malu and henry and their parents for sending those photos in uh, if you've got any photos or videos of things you've been doing this week things that you're thankful for send them in it's a great way to stay connected even when we can't meet in church but now it's over to you uh, this is your chance to go around the people where you are and ask each person what's something good about your week something you're thankful for uh, press pause and then when we come back we can carry on with the rest of the service so let's pause now while you do that and hopefully you had a chance to share different things that were good about your week things that you were thankful for uh, it's time for our game now and for that i'm going to need a certain someone's help so let me uh, get him back in now and welcome back theo well theo i'm glad you've joined me because we need to teach people a song for today's game and it's one of your favorite songs open shut them uh, we do it using our hands and we did it a few weeks ago in church but for those that can't remember shall we give them a quick recap let's see if you can help me so Theo we need to go open shut them open shut them give a little clap okay open shut them open shut them lay them on your lap and then we creep them up creep them creep them creep them creep them right up to your chin and then open wide your little mouth, open your mouth, ah, but do not let them in and hide your hands at the very end. You think people have got that, Theo? Open, shut them, we can do that. And Theo's gone again. Now that's the song that Theo's taught us, but it's a bit too easy on its own. So we're going to do a little bit of a twist now using some traffic lights like this here. Now, if you've seen them on the roads, you'll know roughly what traffic lights mean. 
Green means go, so we'll do the song at normal speed like that. Amber means go slow, so we'll do it at half speed like this. And then when it's red, we just stop. So have a look up here to see what color the traffic light is as we do our song. Remember, green is go, just at normal speed. Amber means go slow. And when it's red, we stop. Okay, if you've got the hang of that, let me start the song now. We'll start with the green normal pace. Open, shut, open, open. But do not let them in. Okay, we're gonna try one more time. We'll do some different things, mix it up a bit. Okay, open, remember. Shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Lay them in your lap. Creep, oh, no creep. But do not let them in. Excellent. Well, well done if you managed to follow along with that. Now, you remember last week in the game, I set you a challenge of how many grapes you could move from one bowl to the other using a straw. And I didn't do very well. I only got two right. Well, two people have sent me in pictures of them doing it. You can see Zoe and Micah here both trying it last week. And they both beat my score they got way more than two across from one ball to the other as you can see there so i'm afraid i was beaten i have to say well done zoe and micah you won our challenge for last week now today we're thinking all about this bread and jesus saying i am the bread of life and in a minute alexandra is going to read to us from john chapter 6 which is the passage where jesus says that i am the bread of life but before she does that, let me set the scene a little for you. Uh, Jesus has just finished the feeding of the 5,000 miracle. He's done that just using some bread and some fish. Just one person's lunch, a little bit of bread, a little bit of fish, and he's fed thousands of people. An amazing thing. And after that, Jesus and the disciples have tried to get away from the crowds. But the crowds wanted to see more of Jesus, this amazing man who could feed over 5,000 people. And they found him again. So Jesus starts teaching the people and talking to them. And after a big miracle like that, as you might imagine, he's talking about bread. So Alexandra is going to read that passage to us now from John chapter 6. Uh, Alexandra. A reading from John's Gospel chapter 6. The next day, the crowd that had stayed on the far shore saw that the disciples had taken the only boat and they realised that Jesus had not gone with them. Several boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the Lord had blessed the bread and the people had eaten. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went across to Capernaum to look for him. They found him on the other side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. You want to be with me because I fed you, not because you understood the miraculous signs. But don't be so concerned about perishable things like food. Spend your energy seeking the eternal life that the Son of Man can give you. For God the Father has given me the seal of his approval. They replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent you. They answered, show us a miraculous sign if you want us to believe in you. What can you do? After all, our ancestors ate manna while they journeyed through the wilderness. 
The scriptures say Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, Moses didn't give you bread from heaven, my father did, and now he offers you the true bread from heaven. The true bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us the bread every day. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. But you haven't believed in me, even though you have seen me. However, those the Father has given me will come to me, and I will never reject them. For I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me, not to do my own will. And this is the will of God, that I should not lose even one of all of those he's given me, but that I should raise them up at the last day. For it is my Father's will that all who see his Son and believe in him should have eternal life. I will raise them up at the last day. Then the people began to murmur in disagreement because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, isn't this Jesus, the son of Joseph? We know his father and mother. How can he say, I came down from heaven? But Jesus replied, stop complaining about what I said, for no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them to me. And at the last day, I will raise them up. As it is written in the scriptures, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has ever seen the father, only I who was sent from God have seen him. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes has eternal life. Yes, I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate manna in the wilderness, but they all died. Anyone who eats the bread from heaven, however, will never die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will live forever. And this bread which I offer so the world may live is my flesh. Then the people began arguing with each other about what he meant. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? They asked. So Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you cannot have eternal life within you. But anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person at the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood true drink. Anyone who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I am him. I live because of the living father who sent me. In the same way, anyone who feeds on me will live because of me. I am the true bread that came down from heaven. Anyone who eats this bread will not die as your ancestors did, even though they ate the manna, but will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Well, thank you, Alexandra. Now, you'll see I've got a number of different objects here on the table. And that's because for this next bit, I want you to think about being stuck on a desert island by yourself, miles from anywhere, and you need to survive. And I want you to have a look at these objects and think, which two would you choose to help you survive? Got lots of different ones here, but you're only allowed to choose two. So which of these would you take with you to a desert island to survive? Let me tell you what we've got. We've got our bread. You should know that by now. Uh, we have a straw. I've got a mobile phone, some string, a candle, a credit or debit card, a bottle of water, a notebook and pen, and some sunscreen. Have a look at that. Those different objects. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different objects, but you're only allowed to choose two of them to go and try and survive on a desert island. Which of these two would you take with you? Have a discussion now, have a little chat where you are and think, what would I take with me to a desert island? Now, do you want to know what I would choose for this here? Well, I would choose these two, uh, a bottle of water and some bread. Why would I choose these two? Well, I think to survive in a desert island, the most important things you need would be water and food. So the things I take with me to survive would be some water and some food till I could get some elsewhere on the island. Because it's really important, water and food, to survive. We need to eat, we need to drink if we want to live. 
And that's what Jesus is on about in today's story when he talks about him being the bread of life. We're going to have a look at that now. But first, let me just get rid of everything else on this table except the bread. And here we are with just the bread left. Now, I remember on the desert island, I said I would take some bread with me because food was very important to survive. You'd want the bread to eat to help you to live. Well, in Jesus' day, that was similar to the situation some people faced. Bread was a big part of what they ate. Bread was a big part of their diet. And for some people, if you didn't have any bread to eat that day, you might not eat anything at all. So no bread could mean no food that day. Bread was very important to help them live, to help them survive. Now, if you went a day without bread, you start to get very hungry. If you went two or three days without bread, well, then you start to get into trouble. So bread was important. It meant they'd have food. It meant they could survive. But Jesus said to them, bread's important, yes, but there's something even more important. Bread helps you live, but I can give you something more important. I can give you the bread of life. And the bread of life offers you eternal life, eternal life with God. If you want eternal life, you need the bread of life. So you can imagine the people going, well, we know bread's important. We need that to live. And something more important than that, the bread of life, well, tell us more about this bread of life. What is the bread of life? And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am what gives you eternal life. I am what gives you new life with God. Yes, bread is important. Yes, we need bread to survive and to eat. But for even more important for eternal life, for life with God, we need Jesus. So Jesus, the bread of life, is even more important than our normal bread we need as well. And Jesus went a step further and told them how he would give them eternal life, what it was he would do to bring us back to God. We could live with God forever. And he did that with a sign using the bread, some wine. Jesus was saying, I can give you eternal life with God through my death and resurrection. And that's what we remember at communion. At communion, we break the bread to remember Jesus' body being broken on the cross. And we also pour out the wine to remember Jesus' blood being poured out on the cross too. The bread and the wine reminds us of Jesus' death and resurrection. And Jesus' death and resurrection is what offers us eternal life with God forever. So when Jesus is talking about him being the bread of life, he's saying, I can give you eternal life. I can give you eternal life with God. And Jesus does this through his death and resurrection to bring us back to God. So yes, bread is important. We need bread. We need food to live. But even more important than that is Jesus, the bread of life. Because Jesus gives us eternal life, meaning we can live with God forever. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, Jesus gives us eternal life with God. And Jesus is the bread of life. And now we're going to have our action song. And in our action song, we're going to sing about following Jesus with the song, Every Move I Make. It's about following and obeying Jesus. Now, again, we're not in church, which means we can sing in our own homes as loud as you like. And we can use our bodies and our arms in the actions as well. So I'm going to hand over now to Jessica, to Ruth and to Sarah for our action song, Every Move I Make. Are you ready?
Thank you, Sarah, Jessica and Ruth. Hopefully you're able to sing along and act along as we praise God together. Now, I think it's probably time that we went and checked on our bread mixture to see how it's doing. Uh, let me go get mine now. And here it is. You want to wait till it's roughly double in size. You can see that's happened here. It should take about 60 to 90 minutes. And the next stage is to warm up the oven and cook it. So set your oven to about 200 degrees for a fan oven, 220 if it's not a fan. And then what we need to do is lift the dough out of here and put it on our tray. Now do it carefully as you don't want to knock all the air out of it. So I'm going to try and do it as carefully as I can and put it on the tray ready to bake like this. So I'm going to stick it in the oven for about 20 minutes. We'll know it's cooked because it'll be golden brown and when you tap it, it sounds hollow. Let's put it in the oven and see what it looks like later. And while that cooks, let's pray together. And I thought what we could use to help us pray today is, of course, bread. It's what we've been thinking about all day today. So I think for the prayer, it'd be good if you went off and got a piece or a slice of bread that you could use to pray with me now. Uh, why don't you pause the video while you get your bread to join with us too. Let's pause it now. Oh, now everyone's got a piece of bread. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a piece of bread. And when I say, Jesus, bread of life, hear our prayer, break off a bit of the bread and eat it. So you're praying with me for the same thing as well. OK, we've got that. Well, now let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the bread of life, that you offer us eternal life with God. And we thank you that through your death and resurrection, you bring us back to God. Jesus, bread of life, hear our prayer. And Lord, we pray now for those who will go hungry today, who won't have enough bread or food to feed themselves or their families. We pray that you would give them their daily bread. Jesus, bread of life, hear our prayer. And Lord Jesus, we pray for those working with aid agencies around the world to ensure people get food and water and other supplies they need. Help them as they help those who are hungry. Jesus, bread of life, hear our prayer. And we pray in our own country for those people working with food banks and other organisations trying to help people and families who won't have enough to eat. Help them as they keep working and volunteering during lockdown. And help us to support them through donations of money and food. Jesus, bread of life, hear our prayer. And finally, Lord, we thank you for those people campaigning, being a voice for the hungry and the poor at this time. We thank you for people like Marcus Rashford and other people standing up for them and their rights. Jesus, bread of life, hear our prayer. Amen. And now let me just finish my mouthful because it's rude to speak with your mouthful. Mm. And I'll finish with this prayer of blessing for us all. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us today as we learn all about Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. Which reminds me, shall we go see what our bread looks like after it's been cooked? Let's go get it now. And here's mine here. Uh, if it's cooked properly, it should be golden brown. And when you tap it, it should sound hollow. Let's give it a go. Yeah, that sounds hollow. So if we cut it open, and hopefully you should see inside that it looks fairly bread-like. I think that's not bad for a first effort, is it? And hopefully yours will turn out well too, and you can enjoy eating it afterwards. And of course, the bread reminds us, bread is important. We need bread to live. But Jesus is even more important. Jesus is the bread of life and we need Jesus for eternal life with God. Well, that's the end of our service today. Please join us next week when we'll be looking at another one of Jesus' I am statements. I hopefully see you then. And until then, goodbye. <laughs>